In this five minute formula, I'm going to explain the Burgard Kaya formalism for credit valuation adjustment, CVA, funding valuation adjustment, FVA, as extended by myself, Kenyon, and Dennis to add capital valuation adjustment, KVA, margin valuation adjustment, MVA, and tax valuation adjustment, TVA. Recall the Black Shoals Merton PDE formula. Firstly, we define an operator A to simplify the algebra. Next, I write down a terminal condition for the equation which gives the payoff. And finally, we write down the Black Shoals PDE itself, which is an expression for the value V of the derivative. To extend this to include XVA, we simply add additional terms to account for the XVA terms. So we write down a new expression for the economic value V hat. What Burgard and Kaya did was to subtract the Black Shoals Merton PDE from this PDE to give a PDE for the valuation adjustment U. Once they had obtained a PDE for U, they applied the Feynman CAC theorem to obtain an expression for the valuation adjustment as a series of integral terms. Together with a choice of funding strategy, it is possible to write down the following expression for the valuation adjustment. where each term takes the integral form where the parameters are given in table 1. This gives us a list of XVAs. Going through this list also tells a story about the history of XVAs. Unilateral CVA was the first XVA that was introduced by a small number of banks in the late 1990s and the early post-millennium period. As the CDS market grew, active management of counterparty credit risk became a viable proposition. Accountants also became interested in the concept. I wrote it into accounting standards like FAS 157 uh, and IFRS 13. Some banks also used bilateral CVA models which included DVA. DVA reflected the benefit associated with a bank's own credit risk. Before the credit crisis, bank spreads were typically of the order of a few basis points, so there was little difference between unilateral and bilateral CVA models. When the crisis hit, bank spreads jumped from basis points to hundreds of basis points and were often far wider than those of their corporate clients. Bilateral CVA models became popular although the pre-crisis FAST 157 had already incorporated bilateral CVA on symmetry grounds. DVA does not appear in this list of equations. In fact, it is there, hidden as part of the next term, FVA. During the crisis, bank funding spreads widened dramatically, and banks began to price in the cost of funding into derivatives. Bergheide and Kaya and other researchers developed models for funding of derivatives and quickly realised that DVA overlapped with funding benefit. The way to rationalise DVA with these new funding models was to recognise that DVA was not a credit adjustment but rather a funding benefit. Coupled with a funding cost term, this gave FVA. These funding models also gave rise to another adjustment, COLVA, or collateral valuation adjustment. This term reflected differences between the discount rate and the return on collateral posted under a CSA. The crisis has also seen banks move to use OIS rather than three-month rates as the source of the discount curve, and so COLVA was needed whenever the return on the collateral was not the overnight rate. Next came the realisation that capital was also a major cost. 
In the aftermath of the crisis, regulators raised capital requirements through a series of changes to the regulatory framework. Banks also started to charge for the cost of capital, and this gave rise to KVA. The post-crisis period also saw a greater emphasis on central clearing, with many derivatives moving to clear through CCPs. These CCPs required initial margin to be posted to ensure that no losses would be incurred in the event of adverse market movements should a derivative position need to be closed. To encourage dealers to clear as many trades as possible, regulators also proposed that bilateral trades under CSA should also be supported by initial margin. Banks realised that this initial margin must be funded as in general it could not be rehypothecated. This led to the next term, MVA. Finally, it was also recognised that XVAs could not be perfectly hedged in practice. For example, there are far fewer liquid CDS contracts than counterparties. Imperfect hedging leads to profits and losses, and these in turn lead to taxes and tax credits. This gave rise to yet another XVA, TVA. That is the story of XVAs to date. However, in reality, it is only the start of the story. XVA is really about market imperfections when compared to the idealised world of Black Shoals Merton. Quantitative researchers have barely begun to model these real-world effects.